I call this session to order. And will you all please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, are there any changes to the agenda? Yes, uh, this is Lisa. I'd like to propose two changes to the uh, consent agenda. Okay. I'd like to um, add in the nomination of Tina Zaney Martin for JRMS CHS permanent substitute effective November 29th. And add in the resignation of Lindsay LePage, CHS instructional associate effective November 20, November 19th, excuse me. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so that's a motion to add those two. Can I have someone second it? Second. Patty? Thank you. Um, and I'll just do a quick roll call. Uh, Charlie? Aye. Thank you. Um, Patty? Aye. Thank you. Lisa? Aye. Thank you. Christine? Aye. Thank you. John? Aye. Thank you. I say aye. So those changes are accepted. Um, since we're on the consent agenda, I'll also ask that the um, minutes from the October 18th, both uh, public and non, be pulled. And I should have done that beforehand, and I'm sorry. So now I have to do roll call vote again. <laughs> or, yeah, I don't need a second. I don't need to do that to have them pulled, right? Right. Right. Okay. Never mind. Great. All right. So let's move on. Public comments. All right. So um, this is Nicholas Handy, communications coordinator. Uh, we have put the policy up on the screen for those either at home or in person to see. Uh, this is the policy relative to public comments. So if you'd like to make a public comment, just make sure you're familiar with our policy. Um, if you are going to make a public comment, use your first name, last name, and town of residence. If you are digital and would like to make a public comment, just use the hand raise feature at the bottom of your screen. You press the button, we'll be able to uh, give you the ability to speak. All right, I'm not seeing anybody at this time. Okay. Um, ben, let's move on to the superintendent's report. <clears throat> Thank you, Marcia. So we're gonna talk about uh, COVID-19 as we do every single time we uh, meet because things change consistently. We'll take a little bit of a brief look at the CIA team, um, some goals, that we've been working on, kind of an update, a budget update, just some FYI information, and then state of the district as to how we're going to uh, make sure that our communication of the things that are going on or that have been going on over the past half a year or so are communicated well to the community. So the first couple of slides have to do with just the state and local data as we share. I've been I condensed it down so that we don't have as many slides. Uh, I've circled the key factors or what I believe to be the key factors in these air, these slides. Off to your left is still the um, hospitalization and uh, death rate in the areas of zero to nine and 10 sorry, uh, 10 to 19, and then even the 20 to 29 right there is circled. Uh, those are the groups of people that we serve. Uh, just a reminder for everyone that is listening that the Pfizer has been approved by uh, FDA and the CDC to um, be used for 
uh, vaccine purposes. And so I know that uh, I've been contacted that some of our students have already had their vaccines and others are scheduled for them. And um, I've contacted a, uh, a contact at our local a hospital to see if we can get in touch with someone who might be able to set up a, uh, a vaccine clinic here. Now it's possible that that's not how they're going to do it in this area. They did not do it that way for the other vaccine clinics. It was the Greater Monadnock Health Organization. So um, I've heard that perhaps they might be putting something together, but more uh, in the area of maybe December. I was hoping to do something a little bit sooner than that. But uh, parents do currently have the opportunity to sign their, their children up and get that vaccine if they so choose. The interesting other circle there is the one to the right in that the numbers of COVID cases as uh, we've seen in our schools, uh, not necessarily situations where they've been uh, recently spread within the schools. I remind people that we did have a cluster in RMS earlier this year. And when we have a cluster, we assume that spread is done in, in that area. Um, but that uh, we do see uh, a number of cases happening. A lot of the time cases are family related. Once you've unfortunately quarantined with someone who is COVID positive, that tends to, we have been finding, tends to run through the family. If it's a large family, there's gonna be larger numbers of COVID-19. We've also been able to find cases of learners who are not in the same family, but are living in the same proximity within uh, town, whether it be Ringe or Jaffrey. Um, so we're just following everything to see where the similarities or where the um, connections are within our school so that we can continue to uh, take a look at our own practices and see if there are any adjustments that need to be, uh, that need to take place. But it is important to note that the levels are getting as high uh, as they were uh, at their highest point within the last year. And so that is true across the state that we've had more increases uh, lately. Uh, interesting enough, Cheshire County is on the lower end of the state. We're still increasing, but still not as um, much as like say, for instance, Sullivan County, which is about double the increase. Mm -hmm. Local data for, we go to the next slide, local data. Uh, this is as of this past Friday. Um, you can see that in Jaffrey and Ringe and in a couple of the surrounding areas, Swansea and, and Fitzwilliam, but have had some increases. We're, you know, not immune to that. And so Jaffrey actually has had, I would say, the bigger increase out of the two towns. And so you'd see 34 cases in the last uh, 14 days, 18 of which are currently active, and Ringe 26 and, and 16 that are currently active. Uh, several of those, perhaps half of those, are uh, students of a student age, some adults as well. Moving over to the CIA team, uh, the curriculum instruction assessment team I mentioned last time have been put together, they have met, and so uh, we had a question as to who they were, you know, where are they from and so forth, so I wanted to make sure their names were up on the slide here and what positions they typically hold within the school district. Uh, some of them do actually hold a couple different types of roles. And so currently the, the three uh, items that they're working on as one of our goals over the next several years is to make sure that we have a culture of literacy and so before delving into any specific curriculums or even in our curriculum revision that we're going to be doing in all areas, especially within the elementary schools and um, but all the way through K through 12 uh, in the areas of English language arts, mathematics, uh, science and so forth, make sure that we're really consistent with what we're doing. Before that happens, we want to make sure that the research has been done properly for what we believe about literacy and reading and what the science says about it. Uh, there has been in the last <laughs> decade to 15 years a lot of research done on brain-based reading and how learners um, take in information and how they process information and if they're not processing it in a specific way what type of interventions can be used in order to help them so rather than implementing something that might work for for many but you know and then 
constantly trying and trying and trying uh, a different approach and not really, you know, perhaps hitting it when we could actually diagnose it better um, is, not, is not the way to go. So we wanna make sure that we have good practices. The SEL handbook, similar as we look for our MTSSB, our multi-tiered systems of support and behavior, uh, four-year implementation of that. One of the items that we have to do or one of the action items that we have to do this year is to um, arrive at a pre preferably K through 12 or P through 12 uh, SEL curriculum, but it can also just be consistent through the elementary school and then something else consistent for secondary, that would be fine. Regardless, it needs to be uh, based on research and based upon what this school district believes. So that is being done. And then the group over to your left, Charlotte, who is at the middle high school and Dana Jackson as well, and then Morgan at the elementary school. They're working on the CIA handbook and that's a handbook of how the, um, the CIA team will operate. And so that it can be a sustainable organization within the school district organization. And again, you've heard me talk about distributive leadership. It is important to note that this is a distributive leadership type of approach. Distributive leadership is a subset of transformational leadership. What this means, typically schools, if you look at the research, distributive leadership is um, mostly researched within school settings. So your PLCs, professional learning communities, that, that can turn into something like a distributive leadership, shared leadership. It's not often done at the district level. We've taken it to that degree, that level, so that there's um, continuity of decision-making and communication all the way through the system. So this is a big step, and it's the reason why they have to develop that structure. Otherwise, it can just change and you know, not be sustainable, or, or perhaps as helpful as it could. So to go to the next slide, some of these items I've talked about, uh, I know that Marcia, you and Mr. Dustin have had some conversations about getting the education committee uh, situated and to have um, meetings set up and then to have a lot of this uh, being reported out on a regular basis. There are some very exciting things happening this year. Um, I can say that this has not been the easiest year. I think that a lot of people would um, <laughs> note that the last couple of years have been have been trying and this year has its own challenges for certain. Uh, that being said, our faculty, our staff, our administration, our teachers, everyone is doing just a really superb job. And many people are trying new things, implementing some pilot programs in different areas and uh, taking some risk. And that's not easy to do, especially during a time when uh, there's instability really in our country, in our state, in our communities. And so um, I wanna thank everyone for the hard work that they've been doing. A couple of these bullet points, MTSSB, you've heard me say that that's gonna be a four year um, implementation. We're working uh, with the State Department of Education on that one. They have a consultant that works with us and we have established a district team. The school-based teams have been established and there's SEL research underway. That's with the CIA team. Um, and they're also looking at data systems to um, make sure that we have the right data systems to be able to make the decisions we need to make down the road. That leads into database decision-making. So when we talk about distributive leadership, uh, we talk about team leaders being identified for the first time in the elementaries. Um, right now, Ringe has three and, and I think Jaffrey is all staffed up, but uh, at, you know, when they're ready, that's when you want them to take on the, uh, the role of these team leaders. If they're not ready, you don't want them just to sign up and, and not do it. Job descriptions are made for those. And so they're very specific as to how we want um, those PLCs run. So um, as a result, however, at the secondary level, because they've been doing it longer, uh, they've had the opportunity to start to look at the data and to make uh, team goals as to how they're going to improve <laughs> whether it be areas of uh, English language arts because of SAT scores, or in the middle school, we've talked about the fact that they've actually changed a lot of different things within mathematics, uh, including the grading process and so forth, which is important for the rest of the school later on. Um, 
based, you know, all for the purpose of setting goals to improve student learning and student outcomes. So stakeholder involvement, I meet with FPU, I think later on this week, just to see how our first year of partnership with them in trying to get a, a much stronger elementary school partnership is going. And then to look at some other possibilities as well that are kind of separate from that. Uh, PTSA is, uh, we don't talk about this enough. This is actually a big deal. And um, I wasn't part of any of this. And so it's really neat as I was reading through um, about a month ago, some of the goals that have been put into the plan. And I knew that outreach to the community was big. And I knew that um, we were lacking parent involvement uh, at this school. And it's true that in secondary schools, parent involvement tends to dissipate a little bit. We don't want that to be the case. And uh, some individuals, um, at least one or maybe two former leadership academy members kind of started this and it's in full fledge. Uh, I believe even members of the school board are a part of this as well at this point in time. Uh, it's early stages, but to have a PTSA, Parent Teacher Student Association, an official one in this is, is a significant step. And I'm really proud of the work that the teachers uh, and the um, student service administrator have done to make this happen. Technology, we've implemented new STEM curriculum in the budget. You'll find out that they have uh, seen a lot of success with that, a lot of interest, and they'll want to continue to, uh, to increase that STEM strand and make it much stronger. Um, that's both within the building trades, and that was already kind of discussed that we would have to step it in over a period of three years, and, and also to add some other uh, curriculum areas. Uh, in, in technology, we're also looking at, you know, increasing our wireless projection. That's an important part for some of our pilots that we even have academically. And we're currently looking at the best way to organize and tackle the action items, which is mostly of a policy and procedure nature in technology um, around security. Uh, how to handle that over the course of several years. Um, I have been in contact with an outside agency who has some experience with this and um, they'll give me an idea of how long or how much support you know, that we would need in order to effectively um, put in uh, the policies and procedures and everything that we would need in order to be a really uh, strong or infrastructurally strong we are policy procedure poor. And so we need to make sure that we're strength all over the place when it comes to technology. For instance, like recovery policies and things of that nature that all, all needs to be developed, yes. Well, yeah, thanks for mentioning this and bringing it forward. Obviously, <clears throat> this past year has given us lots of reason yeah. throughout the country to think about cyber threats. And mm -hmm. of course our neighboring community getting scammed is just a reminder of how vulnerable we all are. And <clears throat> anything you can, like the Adam Group, that's the contractor that you've been working with this for the past year or so? Well, last year we contracted with the Adam Group. It was about $5,000 we paid to them to do a complete audit of, of our safety security hmm. um, systems in the area of technology. Now they went past technology there were other things that they had suggested to us and so and many things we've taken care of and are well on our way to better document storage and everything without even without policy um but there are they their summary uh, was that we had a better than average as a as they look at school systems a better than average safety infrastructure like mechanically speaking really strong firewalls, hardware. you know, the hardware, the all of that is really good and better than most actually. What we were not as good with and perhaps um, below the average of most is our uh, written processes, our um, 
software defenses. cycles are you know uh, it, it, but really the, the policies of how we like for instance password policies you know so you want to you want security you need to have better password policies and password procedures um do we need the question would be do we need to implement a software that's going to you know um change our passwords every 60 days or whatever like that you know what what is there's a lot that we can we can look a lot into. of questions to ask and answer yeah so um there's no shortage of work there but in order to give a good how we're going to proceed in the next three years or so we need to have someone else uh be able to help us with that area it's not a strength area for us um i do know some people and some and a comp another company that we can work with that will that will help us out to get us started and then if there is money that needs to be involved in hiring someone to support us, they'll let us know if that's something that will need to take place. Well, again, thank you for yeah. keeping us up to date on that. It's just a huge area. And yeah. I, I can't even imagine what we would do in the face of a ransomware attack, because I don't think we could pay the ransom, but yet we have all this private data that would be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, on, a, on a note kind of adjacent to that is that uh, we had implemented uh, Frevo systems, and, which is our digital paperwork process within the business office and the SAU, and it's really saved an incredible amount of time and it's very efficient and it's accurate and we're not losing documents, we're, which is which it's beautiful and we can, we've been implementing that more and more. The other piece of that is that we are um, using Docstar as a digital official storage. So for instance, last year, special education in particular, who had who has a lot of documentation, was able to get rid of a lot of it because they've now digitized it all. And so that's how we were able to actually have the room for the SAU conference from down on the other side. That was all storage before of documents. Those documents no longer exist in paper form. So they've, they've uh, we, they're secure. Okay. And they are not going to catch on fire, so it was cheaper. It was cheaper to work with a digital system than to buy fireproof uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of fireproof containers. Yeah. So, and then the last couple areas. Oh, on this, yeah. So we're we're going to continue to work on mentoring and support and evaluation. There's a lot of things that we can, can that we can improve. Mentoring is actively being worked on right now. Um, again, teachers are involved in that process. <laughs> Administrators are involved in that process. A lot of these individuals who have uh, taken part in the leadership academy and have continued on with their schooling as well um, utilize these important areas as their capstone projects so they're benefiting the school district as well as you know learning valuable lessons for them for their own educational experiences budget as you know we're heading we're into budget season um today was supposed to be the time that the first draft budget and default was going to go to the finance committee there still is a possibility that that will take place tonight but if um in talking with carrie uh she got bogged down in a system situation with the new software um has figured it out and is continuing to work work on it and i you know we do have a default that looks like it's going to be in that twenty six million three hundred thousand dollar range which is low but there's reasons for that um and i would say by tomorrow you'll definitely have all the documentation if you're in the finance committee so the finance committee will have that information to have a couple days to look over it prior to the meeting and uh then you can see that there will be a couple finance committees kind of looking through all of that information um then there will be a a version that will go to the entire board i'm working on also when all that digital information goes to the board um prior to you know a week before the school board presentation that we might have some videos that will develop like um that we can use to explain certain things so that people have more information. Like I think, yeah, it's nice to give you the spreadsheets. It's nice to give you all the numbers. It's nice to kind of give you that, but maybe as you have it, some just verbal and visual information will help you process 
what the numbers mean. I think John, you had brought that up before saying, you know, not everyone has the same um, level of expertise or understanding of how to work with everything. So I think if we give people ahead of time that information, it can save some time with presentation as well. We can just focus on answering questions instead. That'll be great. So that's, um, that kind of goes into our last slide, which is the state of the district, because some of that will be actually um, at, a, at a higher level, not so granular, will be provided to everyone in the community for the state of the district. You know, by policy, we have two state of the district addresses, one in the fall, which we're getting close to not being in the fall anymore. Uh, so one in the fall and then one toward the summertime. And we've done face-to-face -face versions and we've done digital versions. And we do know that the last time we did the digital version, we had a 10, 10 times, we had 10, uh, you know, um, 400 versus 40 people attending and, and it kind of interacting with it. Our feedback said that one thing that they would change or ask us to change is not putting it in all in one video, even though it had, we gave people the locations to jump to, that's still different. So it was like, it was still a 20, 23 minute video and it was long. So they said, eh. So we're going to release five over the next month. Um, one starting this week, we have one scheduled for either Wednesday or Thursday. It depends on how we, if we tweak it a little bit to where we want it to go in communication um, and try to release one a week. And there'll be between three and five minutes. Uh, that's, our, that's our target anyway. And um, we'll try to be as dense with pictures and information and less zooming in on a person, for instance, is, is possible. But you'll have voice in the background of some of the information. So that's going to happen over the month. And that should give people digestible bits. Um, it will also give us an opportunity um, to involve a variety of people in this. So obviously John McClare with facilities, um, probably uh, a union uh, president or representative to talk about COVID-19 and ESSER funds, maybe some academics. Um, Co-curriculars, Heather would be involved in that sort of thing. So um, I'll set it up, but it'll be less of me and more of kind of a group, a team. And that is my update for tonight. All right. Sorry. Questions for Ruben? All right. Uh, just comment. a comment that I'm really excited about these videos. I love, I love visuals. Yeah. I love, I love, I love it. But um, especially as we're getting into uh, a season where we need to communicate why we need certain things, you know, to be this, yeah, this transparent and this digestible. You know, we don't have audiences coming to the meetings lecture formats can be harder for people and we're trying to communicate in as many ways as possible is is really the key to just have such a variety of availability that we have the updated websites are be to access vaccination dates for their children in the in the new age group. So um, mm -hmm. I did see that Monadnock Community Hospital is having a vaccination clinic in New Ipswich this weekend. So parents who are interested could actually sign their kids up uh, for this clinic through uh, the Monadnock Community Hospital website. Is that gonna be at the school? In New it New is Ipswich? going to be. Mm -hmm. I have it here. Um, New Ipswich Family Medicine on 821 Turnpike Road. So people can get their boosters or second doses or for first doses for the age, uh, children ages five to 11. Great. Okay, anything else? Ah. Uh.
Can you hear me? Hello, are you there? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, <coughs> twice now, um, you, you've all disappeared. I can't hear anything and I can't see anything. So if, you know, you're supposed to be hearing something from me and you're not it's because you've disappeared on me. Um, and Charlie, just pick up <laughs> where I leave off, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, so we're on to the consent agenda. Um, we've already heard uh, the changes, adding nomination and a resignation. And um, also pull the October 18th minutes. So I can't hear anyone. I can't see anyone. Can you hear us now, Marcia? I can now. Okay. okay. Yeah, we had a small uh, technical difficulty in the room. So you can see and hear us now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I can hear me too. <laughs> oh, you're gone again. Not in here. You're back again. You're back again. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're having a connection issue in here. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if anyone of the audience is having this issue as well. All right. Um, can you hear me right now, Marcia? I can hear you. I'm wondering if if it's just yeah. So it's not you. It's not you that's having an issue. We're having a connection issue um, between the computer and the technology. I'm trying to uh, figure it out as we speak. Um, so right now that you're picking up audio because you're hearing it um, via my personal, like the computer that I'm running it off of. Right. Um, I'm just trying to see what we can do to try to remedy this. Okay, well, um, shall I just continue with voice and not vision? Um, so again, everybody, we can all hear you. The, the Zoom itself isn't the issue, like the room. Right. Like everybody can hear you. Okay. Um, like people are reporting in saying that like they can hear you it's just they're losing the music room feed so i'm trying to remedy how everybody can hear what's going on in the room um so it's it's all attendees are having this issue yeah so the issue is that we are we're having a connection issue between the uh technology that we attach all the cameras and everything to right um and the connection between that and the computer so the technology in and of itself is working the computer in and of itself is working the connection between the two aren't so right now i've unplugged the connection mm -hmm. it's just how are we going to properly continue to conduct this meeting so that you can hear everybody in this room and that everybody else can hear everybody in this room um so I'm gonna try a few things real quick. I don't know if we want to take like a couple minute recess just so recess I can recess for a couple minutes. Just so I can try to reestablish that connection. That's uh, that sounds good. I yeah. don't know if I need. I don't think I need a recess. Do I? Need, I don't need to vote on that. Do we? I mean, no, I don't think so. It's more just me kind of trying to make sure that we can reestablish that connection. Because again, it's not an internet issue or anything like that. It seems like it's the connection cord between the two things. So I'm just trying to see if we can get that to work. Okay.
Nick? Yeah. Should we consider that we're on that we're live? Yes, you are live. Okay, thank you. Um, so it seems like the video feed has returned, Marcia. Yes. Um yes. can some of the board members speak just to see if Marcia can hear you guys? Marcia, can you hear us? I hear John. Hi, do we want to test each table? Charlie, you want to say something? Yeah, testing, one, two. Okay. Great. And, uh, Patty? <laughs> hey, Marcia. Hi. <laughs> we're good. All right, so it seems like we're good. Um, I think that one of the ports on my uh, computer is malfunctioning. So I've luckily I have a second. Um, hopefully that one does not malfunction. <laughs> Right. All right, so we, okay. can, uh, okay. we can proceed and obviously anybody, um, whether it be Marcia or somebody who's still watching the meeting, if you do drop us again, just feel free to um, let me know in the chat and we can go from there. Okay, great. Thanks. All right, so let's back back at it. So we're at the consent agenda. As I said, um, there was a nomination that was added, a resignation that was added, and we need to pull the October 18th, um, both public and non-public. So, um, I need a motion for that. Marcia? Yeah. Before, before I make the motion, I would just like to thank uh, Melipor Sigma for their uh, donation of science supplies. And with that, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as amended. Thank you, Charlie, for both. I need a second. A second, Lisa. All right. Thank you, Lisa. And, uh, Roll call vote. Uh, Charlie? Aye. Thank you. Patty? Aye. Thank you. Lisa? Aye. Thank you. Christine? Aye. Thank you. And John? Yes. Thank you. And I say aye. So the consent agenda is amended, passes 600. Um, and now we'll have the October 18th. Um, Need a motion for that? I'll make a motion we approve the October 18th public and non public minutes. Thank you, Charlie. I'll second that. Thank you, John. And uh, I'll do roll call vote. Charlie? Aye. Thank you, Patty? Aye. Thank you, Lisa? Aye. Thank you, Christine? Aye. Thank you, John? Aye. Thank you. And I abstain. So that passes three or six, five. <laughs> Sorry, five zero one. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. We have a presentation. Yep. This uh, this could be really long, or we won't, you know, or shorter. I'm going to choose the shorter avenue. This is a document that I think that will be good for you to take some time to read through. Maybe you already have done so. Um, it's really just a, we're having this uh, conversation now, just as uh, a startup to you know more conversations. In that the Region 14 Applied Technology Center (ATC), you sometimes hear us say that is a group of schools, Conval, Jaffe Ridge, and Messenic. By and large, the Technology Center is housed at the Conval School District at the high school, but both Messenic and Jaffe Ridge do have a program at each school. So uh, Messenic has an automotive program and we have the construction trades program, formerly the building trades program, but we have um, started to implement a, a, a different curriculum uh, starting this year. So basically, uh, the three schools, we've already gotten together as superintendents to have a conversation about, is this something that we believe that our uh, communities would want to think about or consider? And the what is renovating the existing facilities. Now, it could be renovating the existing facilities. It could be tearing down um, existing facilities and then building new. It could be 
um, renovating and then also building on some new areas that perhaps for some different types of programming. So there are some variations that could take place, um, but the conversation, this was already a presentation at the Conval School Board last, uh, in the last couple of weeks. And so I'm bringing it forward here. I believe it either is this week or has already gone to Messenic as well. And so uh, in general, what ends up happening is after, you know, every so many years, um, the state will pay for renovations having to do with ATC programs. And our time frame for Region 14 is during the uh, 2026 year, I believe it is. Uh, that being said, everything would need to be worked out and, and voted on by the spring of 2024, which means that there would have to be work in 2022 and 2023 to with architects and so forth if we wanted to go forward. Uh, the state will fund at least 50% of the project. Uh, it typically you know, funds about 75% of the project. That has been the pattern. Um, there's no reason to anticipate that it would be less than that, especially because there has been an increase in emphasis on applied technology courses. And our learners who take those courses and the types of schools or certifications that they can get to go right into the workforce or to gain more, go into the workforce and then gain more skills or to go to two year and some four year schools to get the jobs that they are looking for and that our communities need. And so the renovation, you know, we, there's an application process. You can see that on page, I believe it's four of, of this document. And, um, you know, there's there's just a, a variety of things that we would need to have in place, blueprints and so forth, uh, but also a commitment from each school board to go forward, uh, because this is something that would need to go on a warrant if we were at you know on that 24 uh, the spring of 24, so the 23 24 school year, um, and put it before the the, the voters with the understanding that you would not be paying for all of it. Things to consider are, one, do you want to do it? Two, is there any sort of other programming that you'd like to see added onto the current ATC? So whether it is programming that should happen over at the Conval site, uh, which you know they have room for expansion over there, uh, or, or something that you'd like to see further with automotive that Messina might like to do. I think that they have some ideas. Um, due to our situation here with the construction trades going to building trades, we have not thought of yet another item that we would like to add to our system here. We'd like to actually get this one correct. Um, it's gonna take some years to do that, but we would like better facilities to do that. And we think that the area of you know, uh, welding, electrical work, plumbing, uh, construction and so forth covers just such a, it's such a rich, broad category that if we did that well, we'd be serving our community really well. And uh, we have seen since we switched over to this new curriculum and, you know, we have a new teacher this year and, um, and also have done some renovations within the area. If you haven't seen what has been done, you know, from where it was before, we should go and take a look. It's just opened up more. It was a relatively inexpensive way to make that classroom um, one cleaner, less cluttered, and just a better workspace to accomplish what we want to. So if you look at all these programs that exist right now, uh, they give you some kind of demographic information. Uh, they'll use the um, ELMI, so that has to do with economic and labor market information. And so if you're talking about positive ELMIs, that means it's needed in the region or there's more call for it. If you have negative LMIs, that means there's not as much call for it in the area. So I think the areas you see, like careers and education seems to be in Cheshire County kind of down. Um, 
it said computer networking was down a little bit, but they, I think they were also, if you read on, they're looking at kind of combining all the computer courses and, mm -hmm. and programming all together because there's a, a huge need for um, computer programming and software within the region. So that's kind of how you read that. Then you have the construction trades. You can see that it's pretty healthy and steady across the entire state as um, jo job opportunities. Now, construction trades is broad, and it was intentionally broad. So we took it from a pure carpentry program to one that um, provides individuals with uh, experience in a, in a variety of areas and the ability to then hone in on one or two of them uh, if, if they so choose, uh, whether it be through internships or um, other ways to get um, certifications. That's kind of um, where, we've, where we've headed toward. And then also there's an explanation toward the end of this document of all the schools that there are that can support these types of programs following high school. And so uh, the goal, as we had a conversation with the uh, superintendents, is that we really should be offering programs where kids, I say kids, you know, young adults can gain not only skills, workplace skills, you know, skills obviously from the content that they're uh, learning, but that they're also able to get cert certifications. So if they can get certifications during this time frame, or if they can, um, start on schooling during this time frame in this area, or they can go uh, on and seamlessly go into another two-year school at the very least. And we want, we want to encourage that um, they're learning this, but learning it at a deep level. So mm -hmm. however we, can, we build this and we continue to build this, we wanna make sure that they're, they're not only getting the knowledge, but they're gaining the credentials that they need in order to be able to um, get the job that they want to get and at the highest level they can get them. So this is just an FYI, an information presentation to let you know that this is coming up um, and that I'm, I'm pretty certain that the other school boards are very interested in moving forward and doing some renovation. Uh, certainly we have a place that could definitely use some renovation and improvement. Uh, we would want to engage our PAC, which would be the individuals from the local community who um, advise us in the construction trades and who helped us move to this other curriculum. Um, and then, of course, uh, the other two schools that we'd be working with. Um, we have time to think, time to um, discuss things in finance and facilities. We have time to decide whether there's other curriculum areas. It's just been a difficult time to brainstorm and, and envision even more future things when we just want to make sure that what we're doing right now is, is quality, not only in this programming, but everything else with the last couple of years of how uh, things have gone with COVID. So, so I have a question. Sure. Uh, my my question is um, that you had mentioned the the pack. Has there been anything scheduled yet for when they might meet? Because I think that would be really important for us to hear what the pack has to say. Yeah. So the pack has not met on this yet, but it it, it does need to be scheduled, and um, I will be double checking in on that. I thought that there was an invitation sent out, but I did not receive it. Um, I'm left off sometimes, but I will double check and see if there is, has been anything scheduled. And if not, I will make sure it is scheduled. Great. I did, I did want this information going to the school board prior to it going to uh, other groups, though. Yeah. No, that was important. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, from my understanding, what they're looking for is a um, commitment from the board to move forward and also to form a committee. Those are the two things that I got out of the document. Yep, there are two next steps. Determine if the board wants to move forward with the project. Right. 
and then B, create renovation committee, which would involve maybe a board member, other people, you know, from, from both school, all schools. From my perspective, perspective you know, having went, gone through this thing, they present a lot of opportunities, but those opportunities um, need to be uh, formalized and finalized. And then and in order to do that, you need a committee from all the different schools to get together mm -hmm. and, and actually do that. So the sooner that, the, from my perspective, mm -hmm. the sooner that I can start seeing these are the plans, these are the uh, ed education opportunities we want to avail ourselves of. Uh, this is what the budget things we're going to be looking at. Uh, this is the staffing we're going to need. All of those kind of things are going to determine whether or not I support something or don't support it. So those things need to be in place as rapidly as possible from my perspective. So I'm, I'm willing to say, hey, uh, if we don't take a look at this and we don't you know, form a committee to do it, um, we're just spinning our wheels. So I want to give the other schools, the opportunity, I should say, the other schools, the um, feeling that we're, we're all in and we support the effort. Does this need a motion to move forward? It would be stronger to have a motion from the board saying that they wanted to move forward with pursuing this project and then getting on the committees and so forth. I would like to make a motion that we move forward with the Region 14 ATC renovation executive, uh, executive projects in hopes of having a committee formed very soon. All right, thank you, Lisa. I'll second that. All right, thank you, Charlie. Um, is there any further discussion on this? Yeah, yes, uh, just just discussion. Uh, yep. This sounds like a, you know an exciting opportunity and. Uh, now, of course, when Ruben talks about building trades and mentions all the different trades, the idea that we could build out a, a solid program in those areas is, is very exciting. But there's a lot to do. And uh, with making a commitment tonight would be my understanding that we're not committing, obviously, to a budget number or anything like that. We're committing to going forward looking into this establishing a committee etc is that yeah i mean i think it's difficult for a board to um force another board down the road to do something you know sure. but i think that it's a good faith vote like we we this is something we believe in we want to move forward this is a good opportunity we want to be part of this yes right, right. Okay. So we're just setting our intentions yeah, it's the intentions. Right. I think I think this is terrific, Ms. Patty. Um, yep. having toured um, the Conval program, th those particular programs a few years ago. Um, I guess I I'd like to see some information about how it, it's really helpful to see what other schools have gotten prior to now, you know, in the past and see how they've brought other districts together as a team and the AT the coordinator who obviously put this document together this is the first data I feel like I've seen that's really helpful in terms of like how many and and the, and the demand uh, that's fantastic and even to project out what other types of programs could be needed like animal care and I, I think that's really fantastic um I just I'd, I'd really like to have a solid program that we offer here. And if that can be worked into the budget, the development of that, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but I like what you're saying, like if we each of the schools could collectively come up with something specific, a project, so each of the three has something in this as a budget and it's not weighted too heavily on one school or the other, that would be great. What a, what a great team effort. That would be. I agree. Well, and most, you know, most other locations don't have multiple sites. Right, right. This is a very unique. Um, I mean, another 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 avenue is to, you know, build everything and have everything housed in one location over in Conval. Um, if that's something that we can go back to them with that information. 
Um, it is not something that I believe our school desires to do or our community would want to do. I think that there's power in, the, in having programming here. Um, I think it's power in have, sending our kids to another location and, and vice versa. There is costs involved, you know, for schools to travel to other places. So, you know, there is that, but. Well, I think that our employers in the region really want to see some of these skill sets developed early and what better way to do it. I, I, I can't imagine um, not doing it. <laughs> so let's invest in it. Let's get like build it out bigger. All right, if that's, are we done with discussion? Is there any other discussion, any comments? Okay, so we have a motion from uh, Charlie about um, make, doing the next steps of like starting to put together a committee and, and getting more information on this. So, Lisa. was it Lisa that made the motion? Sorry, Charlie seconded, sorry. Sorry. Um, okay. So all I'm going to do uh, a roll call vote. Um, and I will tell you that I can't hear you all right now or see ya. I hear something. All right, can you hear me at this point? I can I can hear you. All right, so once again, I'm gonna have to do the quick little um, reset. Unfortunately, we're having some technical difficulties with the computer again. I do apologize. The good news is we are almost at the end of the meeting. And for those of you who can see me, I wish I were more talented. I could sing you a song and entertain you in some way. But no, sorry. I see Nick. So Nick, I don't know if it would help at all. Like it's okay not to see for me, especially since we're almost done with this agenda, but if we could hear, so I don't know if that matters, if like one's easier than the other. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so my recommendation, since we are so close to the end and this is by no means a great solution, again, I do apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, the issue that we're having seems to be dealing with the USB ports on this computer, um, either shutting down or just having some problems. Right now we're just on the uh, computer, um, you know, laptop, um, webcam and audio. Um, it's kind of janky and not the best, but I could also I could bring the computer closer to the board members. I could, you know, kind of show you each person. We could do the votes. We could do finish out the meeting that way. Again, it's it's not the best solution, but it does make sure that we can at least complete the meeting. Right. I think as long as we have sound, mm -hmm. you know, it's it'd be like if we were tuning in on our phone kind of thing. Yeah. So what I will try is, again, this is by no means perfect, but it offers something. It's a bit hokey, okay. <laughs> All 
Oh, boy. All right. Okay. I guess if the board wants to speak, um, John. Hello, Marcia. Hi. Can you hear that? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I can hear that fine. So we can at least finish the meeting like this. Again, it's an issue with the computer. We'll get it remedied for the next. Yes. By doing it this way, they can hear, everybody can hear the room. Can they ask the question? Can the remote attendee? Yes, we can still hold public comments because technically right now by hearing Marcia, Marcia is remotely in the meeting. So you're gonna be able to access anybody else that's remote. We can still hold public comments. We can still finish out the meeting. The biggest thing is we just take a hit to the audio and the video. Um, but as long as Marcia can hear you guys, then the general public can hear you. So if Marcia... Yeah, so if you can hear Marcia, the general public is going to come through with the same volume and everything else. It's the same system. We're just completely disconnecting from this since there's a fault in the USB port okay. on the computer. So. Okay, so I'll ask um, if folks just really speak up um, just to make it a, that much easier because some voices carry better than others. And then, if, you know, you're wearing masks on top of it. So that's all. Just really speak up so that it's very clear. Okay, we were in the middle of, um, we had a motion by Lisa, not Charlie, Lisa. And um, we had some discussion and I was just about to take a roll call vote. So, Charlie. Hi. Thank you. Patty. Hi. Thank you. Lisa. Hi. Thank you. Christine. Hi. Thank you. John. Hi. Thank you. And I say aye. So that carries six zero zero. So we're moving forward with that, with our intent to see what we can do to improve this. Okay, um, we're up for a second reading of the policy. So um, this is Patty. Um, I'm gonna read the I don't know that Lisa was at this meeting. I'm not sure. We've, we've discussed this several times. It was actually um, approved about a year ago or so, but we made some updates, um, particularly because the, um, it, it's just going back that, particularly because the custodial staff is doing more now due to COVID in terms of sanitization, security, um, Maintaining support of folks who are. Hi. Oh, my close up. Um, and so we we did this update. This is the second reading. Um, I don't think we had any particular questions. Although I will say that um, we want to emphasize that there still is a waiver process. So concerns. Um, we do, we have delineated a priority use of this space, um, but that was true a year ago. So nothing's really changed there. We have um, recognized that from time to time, a for profit entities may use the space if needed. And that could be, I don't know, anything from utilizing the Pratt gymnasium or one of the school gymnasiums. Um, and then we also kind of break down the conditions of use um did a couple editing of some words nothing very exciting but we just wanted to remind folks that the custodial staff is you know is paid through the district through the budget process use of the space um sometimes requires custodial staff to come in after hours or on weekends and that that they are being paid at that time gratefully we are very grateful for their extra efforts um, and that we needed to delineate out um, the kinds of costs, that, the true cost of what that looks like. So that is a bit of an explanation for the second reading. So okay, we would love to entertain a motion if that's something anyone would like to do. All right. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. 
What was that one again, Charlie? I think there's a typo. Um, on the C section, Nick, where the last sentence it says, therefore, an environmental service custodian fee will be charged for each facility used for priority five and six. Um, I think it might be to be made or something different. That's not quite right. Well, if I just crossed out from R on it, great. Right. Right. Yeah, I think if we need to maybe um, maybe I'll look for a motion to accept it as amended at, um, with a period after the word six or parentheses six. Okay, well, I'll be trying to say an environmental services so fee of twenty five dollars will be charged for each facility you use for priority five and six. You just by the Jeffrey Ridge. Park. Yeah, get rid of R made. Yeah, I think that's what I was thinking too. Just strike the R made. Okay. But I, I but I guess before I I said it before, I'll say it again. Some some uses may be approved and the cost may be waived. It, it I guess I did I don't want anyone to get too excited about that that it's always going to be the case um right did charlie make a motion <laughs> he did okay i'm sorry it was muffled for me sorry so he made a motion. Made a motion and John seconded. Okay, lovely. Thank you. It was all focused on Patty, so I couldn't hear you guys as well. All right. Thank you, Charlie and John. Um, any further discussion? Okay. Charlie. You want to do the cut you around, everybody. That's if you can. Yeah. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> no. Nick Nick asked a question. That's all. All right, so if we're ready for the vote, I can just bring in each person so that they can be seen and heard. Okay. Yes, I think we're ready for the vote. So, um, John? Aye. Thank you. Lisa? Yes. Thank you. Charlie? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Patty, thank you. Christine? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I say aye. That passes six zero zero. Okay. Have we had any committee meetings since our last? I mean, we've already reported out education. David and I met to talk, uh, and we're setting up time frames and stuff like that. So that's education committee. Facilities will meet this week, or excuse me. Finance. Uh, finance will meet this week. The facilities will meet next week. Okay. Policy we've already talked about. Anything else? Okay. Um, it's public comments. All right, so I'm back again. <laughs> <laughs> again, sorry about the technical difficulties that we are experiencing. Um, we do only have a digital audience, so I'll just quickly go over um, the rules again. Um, so if you'd like to make a public comment, just be sure to adhere to the policy on the screen. You can use the hand raise feature. By doing that, we can acknowledge you, first name, last name, town of residence, please. All right, and I'm not seeing anything. No. Okay, that's fine. Um, anything for board matters? No. All right, any future items anyone wants to see? 
Okay, then I'm I'm up for a motion to adjourn. I make the motion that we adjourn. All right, thank you, Patty. Second. Second. That's John. Done deal. We are adjourned. Thank you.